exciting. So, Wendy, we are handing over to you. Um, take it away. And I'm okay. just going to finally say to the guys on the call, uh, we're going to be coming back to questions at the very end of Wendy's presentation. So just keep those questions coming in throughout the call. Sally and I will be picking those up and we'll come back to Wendy at the very end. Wendy, okay. so That's good to great. have you. Over to you. Thank you so much, Sally and Sharon. You guys are wonderful. I've really enjoyed getting to know you. And again, thank you so much for um, inviting me to do this. It's um, a great honor to be a part of your community. I know you have a wonderful community that's thriving and really supporting each other. And it's always wonderful to be a part of that. The only thing I wish that we could do obviously more is uh, be live together, um, but hopefully one of these days we'll be able to do that. So thank you again. And thanks to all of you for making time for this. Um, I have a lot to say, um, so I'm going to go fairly quickly, um, but I hope it's going to be um, well organized and able to be processed easily. And um, if you have any questions at all, like Sally and Sharon said, please um, drop it in the chat. And then you can also email me later. I'll give you an email address that you can um, ask questions with. So let's dive right in to developing inside a rhythm. I want to start by talking about rhythm. Um, I would suggest, and hopefully you will agree, that rhythm is the most fundamental part of music. You can have the most beautiful and flawless technique. You can have the most gorgeous singing voice. You can have the most wonderful tone. Um, but if there's no rhythm, people really don't want to hear you play. And it's not um, very enjoyable to listen to. Without rhythm, music is actually not musical. So it only makes sense that if rhythm is the most fundamental part of music that we prioritize it in our teaching. But what happens instead is that we seem to just relegate it to being taught alongside of other things, especially note reading. So we open our method books and we start teaching a piece and we teach the rhythm of the piece. And we're also teaching a little bit of note reading or maybe rote teaching or maybe dynamics or maybe um, orientation of the keyboard all at the same time. And so what we're really not doing is prioritizing this fundamental um, aspect of music so that it can then infiltrate everything that we do. I think that students need to look at a rhythm and know how it sounds. And I think that's possible um, when we're able to prioritize it. I also think that kids need to get past the count out loud stage sooner. Um, I don't know if you have trouble with this, but um, Whenever I uh, asked students to count out loud, they would not be very excited about that. And the older they got, the less excited they were. And so it's just hard to have to nag them constantly, count out loud, count out loud, so that you can get this rhythm correctly. So um, in order to um, do that, I think we really have to prioritize rhythm in order to get them past that count out loud stage to sooner. That's not to say that you shouldn't have them count out loud, but I think they can get beyond that much quicker than we typically do. So this is how this curriculum all got started. I realized that my students needed to get rhythm in their bodies so that they could start counting out loud or stop counting out loud sooner. Um, but the problem was that the practice pages that I was finding on the internet or that I was creating myself, I realized were really random. And when was the last time that you put a piece of random music in front of your students? I would, I dare say never, but even if you had ever put a piece of random music in front of your students, do you think your students would practice it? No, they wouldn't because random is not musical and random doesn't make us want to practice anything. And rhythm is rarely random in music. Uh, random is not fun. It's not enjoyable. So it's no wonder students don't want to practice random rhythm drills or things like that. I think that random inhibits mastery for the very reason that I was saying, if you put something random in front of someone and they try to tap it and clap it or whatever you want them to do with it, it's just not enjoyable. It doesn't have a hook. 
It doesn't make you want to move your body. There's nothing in it that makes you want to do it again. And so because they're not going to practice, it, in, it actually inhibits mastery because they aren't practicing. I do think that random rhythm drills are good for one reason, um, and that is for testing. So if you really want to um, decide or approve whether students know the difference or the relationship between a crotchet and a minim, then a random rhythm drill might actually show that to you. But nobody really practices tests. It's just not something um, that's fun to do for the reasons that I mentioned. So let me give an example of a random rhythm drill. If you'll just take a minute and clap this with me, you'll see what I'm talking about. Ready? One, ready, go. Now, was that enjoyable? I dare say no. Was there anything about that that you can remember? Was there anything about that that made you wanna do it again? No, it's not memorable, it's not repeatable, it's not groovy, it's not musical at all. Um, so how do we get rhythm into our student's body? I think that a rhythm itself has to be composed specifically to be memorable, repeatable, and groovy. There might be a better word for that. It feels like a 70s term, but you know what I'm saying. Um, it has to be something that makes the body want to respond, not just a mental exercise for the hands and the mind. Students have to get and to move their bodies in order to get it into their bodies. If they're just thinking about it and just barely clapping their hands, that's not really getting it into their bodies. And hearing music that actually complements the rhythm while learning helps all of these things to happen. So let me give you an example of a um, musical rhythm. And give me one second, I'm gonna cue my, cue my music up. And if you'll clap this with me, and then we'll talk about why it ends up being musical. All right, here we go. This is the accompaniment track with it. This is a medium speed, two, three, one, ready, go. Oops, ah. hold on one second. <laughs> uh, hold, hold on one moment. I've got a little bit of a little issue. It's not a big deal, but Siri thinks that I called on her. <laughs> so let's try this again. Um, okay, here we go. Ready? And of course, now it's not working. Hold on a second. Let me make sure. This the, joy, is the joys of technology. The wonder. joys of technology. I know. Can you believe this? Sharon and I tested this earlier and it was just fine. You heard it just a second ago and it was yeah, just fine. Yeah, we, we and know it's there. Yeah. Siri thought that I called and I did not. I did not summon her. Here we go. One, two, three, <laughs> one, ready, go. <laughs> the rhythm wrong, but that's because I got a little thrown off. But you can see what's happening here is that the eighth notes on beat three are designed to help you land on beat one in a more musical way. Beat one is the strongest beat. So those eighth notes, which you have to tap um, softer and with less energy are going to land there. So one, two, three, one, two. You just innately did that and students, even though they don't feel the rhythm initially because they've never really experienced it, those eighth notes will help them to land on those, um, those, um, those beats, the first beats of the measure. So this is what I mean by a musical rhythm. There's re a repetition in it. There's a motive that somebody can actually repeat back um, and it's actually musical and it sounds interesting. All right. Now let's get back to here. So um, rhythm menagerie and rhythm manipulations were created to make practicing rhythms musical and enjoyable, organized and comprehensive, and also to help ensure mastery. Now this is our core curriculum. I'm, I noticed uh, Sally said that many of you are using rhythm cup exploration. So I wanted to real briefly mention how that actually fits into here. This is the curriculum, um, the significant curriculum, I would call it. We just consider this a supplemental um, um, curriculum and it's effective to just not as effective. So let me just real quickly tell you the difference between the two. There's significant 
significantly more material in menagerie and manipulations than in rhythm cup explorations. For example, rhythm menagerie has 96 pages, 11 pages per rhythm concept. Manipulations has 84 pages, and again, 11 pages per rhythm concept. But rhythm cup explorations only has three to five pages per rhythm concept. 36 pages in one book, 16 pages in another book, 32 pages in another book. So there's just not as much material. Um, Rhythm Menagerie and ma uh, Manipulations is much more comprehensive and it's carefully graded. This is what a lot of teachers have said in reviews. We appreciate how it starts out easy in the unit and then you obviously build on that, but you don't build on it until there's enough material to give the student time to master it. Uh, menagerie and manipulations are sequential and they don't jump around unlike rhythm cup explorations. Here's an example. Um, over on the left, you can see where the menagerie has and manipulations has all of these things, crotchets, minims, semi, minims, semi, uh, semi breeze, rests and ties. And let me just say real quickly, there are two editions of menagerie and um, rhythm Cup Explorations, there's an international edition that uses the terms you all use, like crotchets, minims, and things like that. And then there's what we call the North American uh, version. And if I resort to calling things quarter notes and half notes, please just forgive me. I'm not always um, used to using the other terms, but we do have an entire, these books are international, and so they use these particular terms. Anyway, uh, back to this. So you can see on the uh, left-hand side that it's very sequential, but on the right Right hand side with Rhythm Cup Explorations, um, not including the first book, but uh, the My First Rhythm Cup Explorations, but that second book, Rhythm Cup Explorations 1, <clears throat> excuse me, that one jumps around. You've got quavers, you've got crotchets, you've got a unit on semi-quavers. And the reason that is, is when I first created it, I wanted uh, teachers to have something they could use with all levels of students right away. And then when we got to Rhythm Cup Explorations 2, we filled in those gaps. So they very much uh, jump around, but you get something with each of the books, unlike Rhythm Menagerie and Manipulations, which is designed to be sequential. All right, um, and then Rhythm Menagerie and Manipulations are really designed to help put it in students' body, and I'm gonna show you what I mean by that here in a moment. All right, so real quick, let's go through Menagerie so you can see examples of what it's like. This is the table of contents. You probably can't read this very well because it's real white, but it includes uh, crotchets and minims, semi-breeves, uh, dotted minims, crotchets, rests, and ties, mini, excuse me, minims, semi-breeve <laughs> semi rests, I sometimes say that wrong, sorry, quavers, quaver rests, and dotted crotchets. Um, each unit contains an introductory page. Now, some teachers just skip this page because they let the method book introduce a concept, and that's perfectly fine. They're very skippable. Then level one has single line rhythms that students can clap or tap or play on their instrument, two-handed rhythms to help them develop coordination, and then the fun with sounds pages that also help get it into their bodies. Level two, again, same kind of um, sequence and same kind of pattern, but it's a little more complicated in level three, same thing, and then there's a master of rhythm certificate at the end. So here's the introductory page to unit one, and every unit has a beautiful animal or two or three in it, and this is the tarsier who can uh, conveniently move its head um, a completely 180 degrees so it can look behind its body without moving its body at all. So it's kind of a fun little thing. Um, we have all these animals in here that have little puns and um, funny things and just uh, interesting tidbits. So this particular page is just one particular rhythm. You don't want to overwhelm them that first week. So it's one rhythm that you work with them um, at the lesson and they get good at it. And then every day it gives them something new to do at the lesson with that rhythm. Now on day five, this is the ultimate test that I learned a lot about how I was teaching. Um, in day five, they're supposed to compose their own rhythm with quarter notes, excuse me, with um, crotchets um, and uh, half notes, and they are supposed to put those in the, um, the measures to only have four beats in a measure. And I discovered, much to my dismay, that a lot of students were not understanding four beats in a measure. They would put all kinds of beats in a measure. They wouldn't add them up. So it's really revealing sometimes what you think your students understand and then what really they understand. All right, level one, uh, first page after that, um, includes very simple rhythms you can see. 
uh, level uh, one two-handed rhythms, you can see that um, it's designed to be repetitive, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, 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 left, 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 very simple. The next one is left, left, right, left, left, right. It's not always repeated where the first, excuse me, the second measure does the same thing as the first measure. There's the different patterns of repeating, but it's definitely um, um, things that students get and then they get to practice again instead of just one measure each of any idea. Um, on every one of these single um, line rhythms and two-handed rhythms, there's a progress bar over to the side and it looks like this. Students are supposed to draw a quarter note for every day that they practice. Now this brings up some interesting topics because what if they get five days of practice? suddenly you're introducing them to an asymmetrical meter that you might not have, or the method book might not have introduced them to for several years, but you get them into different things like 7-4 and 6-4 and 5-4. Is that really something, Mrs. Stevens? Why, yes, it is. I had a student one time that asked me, well, um, is it possible, instead of uh, putting a quarter note in for every day I practice, what if I put a quarter note for every time I practice the page? Well, when your student has an idea, if it's a decent idea, the answer should always be yes, because they take more ownership into an idea that they create and come up with. And so I said, well, yes, why don't you try that? And so they came back with a measure of 21 over four. <laughs> and that was um, a really interesting conversation is 21 over four even possible, Mrs. Stevens? And we got to talk about that. So it's really fascinating how these things um, um, just come up, uh, bring up different conversations that you can have. The other thing that's on these two pages is the certificate of completion. And this just allows the student to declare, I think I have mastered this, and then the teacher to declare it as well. Um, the third part of each of these uh, levels is the fun with sounds pages. And in every one of these changes. And so this first one is just simply a clap, clap, knock, knock. So it goes like this, clap, clap, knock, knock, clap, clap. And um, bum, bum, just simple, something though that gets them out of just the clapping um, idea. And this, like I said, is the very first one, so it's very, very simple. Oops, excuse me, lost my, lost my, um, just one second, I lost my um, headphone. All right, Sally and Sharon, can you still still hear me now? Yes, we can. Yeah, yeah. Oh, excellent, okay. All right, very good. Okay, so in level two, um, we're moving to three, four timing, triple meter right away so that they don't get used to four, four too much. Feels like there's not enough triple meter in method books. And so you can see how this is especially designed one, two, three, one, two, three, one, for them to land on that half note and give more emphasis there. This one, you can see it's left, right, Right, so you get that feeling of that three, four timing. Here's the fun with sounds pages. Again, this is a little different based on a different animal. Then in level three, you can see now we've come to syncopation, even within crotchets and minims. Dum, 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 dum. Here's the repetition. Dum, 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 dum. So you get the idea that this is definitely going to be what you don't want to introduce them first because it's more complicated, but they've worked up to it so they can finally do the syncopation when they get to it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then the two-handed rhythm uses those same kinds of syncopations, the fun with sounds on the syncopations also there. So I want to give you some examples of some with the some of the fun with sounds pages so you can see how it involves their body and it's really fun for students. Um, this right here, again, like I said before, is the um, one with the owl. And let me see, hopefully this will work. Again, <clears throat> takes my speaker just a second to wake up after it's been not awake for a second. So, all right, hold on one second. And of course, it's not playing right now. <laughs> I may just have to play this through my other computer. So hold on one second. I've been talking fast anyway, so <laughs> it'll give no, you a little all, break. All fascinating. You you just give your voice a rest because everybody is is just loving this, and people are saying okay. they're, oh, they're using rather uh, quite a lot of these things already. But I'm certainly oh, getting good. lots and lots of ideas here. Good, good, excellent. Okay. Well, I'm not sure. Oh, I know why this is not working. 
we're just going to have to play it through my computer and not through the speaker. Oh, my goodness. That's all good, whatever way, whatever way works. And I'm just going to say, um, I, I love the way you help students be curious. And I'm sure everyone else out there is, 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 is agreeing with me as well. You know, five, four, yeah. um, because we're obviously all about it curious. It dovetails <laughs> nicely into the curious part, doesn't it? For sure. <laughs> it does. Me, okay. It does. It okay. does. Here we go. Okay. My, my sound preference is open. Um, all right, supposed to be playing there. <laughs> oh dear, hold on. That's all right, that's all right. You take, Here we you go, take we'll just time. play. This is not as good of a speaker, but it'll still work. One, two, three, and there you go. that was pretty slow right and so we actually have three different um, tracks of um, tempos for each of these and so sometimes I'm going to play the fast track sometimes I'm going to play the slow track this is the gorilla page and this one is really fun for students especially um, that love or that are outgoing some students are a little bit shy about this page but when they hear you doing it it's really fun for them they love to at least laugh at you if nothing else two three four try it with me one two reach your chest ready so you get to talk to them about the fact that they beat their chest um, instead of just clapping out loud. And I always make sure that the students understand um, the rhythm before they actually do it. I didn't uh, explain that very well to you again because it kind of throws me off sometimes when things aren't working. But you get the idea. You would make sure the student knows how to um, play this accurately before you actually do it with them, especially that was the medium track. Now, this one is especially fun. It's the only fun with sounds that we actually used in the second book too because it works with all levels and this is the one where it's really fun to be able to do it with people and so um, you can actually just kind of air five your students so if they'll just do that with me when we're doing it together um it still works even in lockdown because you can do this air five and the the tracks themselves are going to sound like they're actually high-fiving so it should still um, work pretty well all right here we go I'm gonna get it. Okay, I think it's here. Two, three, four, one, two, ready, go. Oh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> Sorry, this one, here we go. Two, three, four, one, one, two, ready, go. Again, this rhythms really um, bug me when I'm a little bit thrown off from technology. Um, so what's interesting, we'll talk about how to do this and deal with the delay um, at the end. Um, so just hang on if you're wondering, well, that's going to seem funny if the student's not playing it with me at the same time, if you've experienced some of those delays, but we'll talk about that. Okay, um, at the end of each unit, there's the a Menagerie Master of Rhythm Certificate. Now, I, if you've been around Compose Create uh, very long, you know that I, I really don't like certificates. I, they're so overused and they're so boring usually. I told our artists, would you please create a certificate that students would be proud of and then would make them smile. And so this is what he created. This is the Tarsier from Unit 1. So this is just a beautiful certificate. Obviously, they're just fascinated with their certificate. This is the one from Unit 3 um, with a beautiful elephant on it. This is one of my favorites, um, the bunny um, from Unit 2. And then here's a um, flap jar, Nightwing flap jar uh, from Unit 5. And so there's one for each of these. These are just gorgeous that our artists created and adapted and I just I'm so proud of these it makes me happy 
to be giving students certificates. Um, just real quick, there's lots of um, feedback from teachers on the website about this, so please don't just take my word for it. I know it seems probably like, you know, um, I'm trying to tell about it, tell you about it, and I've, obviously I'm proud of it, um, but um, lots of teachers really love this. Diane Heidi says each set meets a need for fun and rhythm. Teddy Carr says it's hard to believe how eager they are to clap out loud and tap. It's been fabulous. Um, Lori said um, even students who have never counted before are doing so with Rhythm Menagerie. So these are um, just fun things, but, but helpful things, I think, for you to know how you can actually use them in your lessons. Now, quickly, let's just go through rhythm manipulations. You know the general gist of what's happening here, but rhythm manipulations was specifically designed to appeal to preteens, teens, and anyone who thinks they're mature. And so it doesn't have the animals anymore, although rhythm menagerie can certainly be used for older students. There are a few pages that might feel kid-like to them, but this is the second book in the series. It picks up right where menagerie left off, and um, especially teenagers love um, this book. All right, so it covers cut time, compound meter, quaver triplets, semi-quavers, semi-quavers expanded because there's lots to do with semi-quavers, dotted quarter, uh, quaver, excuse me, and polyrhythms. A whole unit on polyrhythm is one of my favorites. Each unit, again, contains the same idea, level one, level two, level three, um, single line rhythms, two-handed rhythms, and rhythm maneuvers. And then there's, of course, a Menagerie Master of Rhythm certificate. Here's an example of the introductory page. Um, and so this, um, you can see that at least on this page, it gives instructions to maybe try it with one and two and three and four and, but you can actually use whatever counting method you want. There's only one or two pages that actually show a counting method. And there's even pages that show five different counting methods a student can use. And only these introductory pages give those methods. And so all the other pages can be used in any other counting method that you want. Um, cut time, you can see, again, just if you look at the progression of things, you'll be able to see that um, it's very simple when it first start out. The progress bar um, in manipulations is a little bit different. We try to make it a little more complicated and a little more thought provoking. Um, this just one says, draw a note ahead for every day that you practice. Not a quarter note, a note ahead. And then what they have, have to do for the lesson, lesson is make, make however many new note heads they, they drew into, into a bar that, that fits into this measure. And you'd be surprised at how many students, students don't, don't really get, get what time, time it is when you, when you show them how to do that. That's different. It changes for every single unit. unit. So, so in some, some units, it's about, about um, um, you know, using, using uh, 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 quay quay rest, rest. In some, some units, it's about, about using semi quaver, quaver notes, notes and things like, like that. that. Um, again, again, that has to manage your system but instead, instead of having, having to sign, sign their name, name, I'm not as interested in signing their name when they're older. They just just initial. Um, um, you'll, you'll notice, notice that the artwork, artwork in the, the manipulation is, is interesting and, and unique, and, and, and it actually is specifically designed, designed to go with every minute. And, and so, so we had a lot, lot of discussions. I, I had a lot of discussions with the artists and talked about, about all these rhythm, rhythm concepts and said, okay, okay, what's well, significant about this rhythm concept? Well, you can, you can see, see in cut time, time and what's it done to our artwork. He's cut it, and, and so, so each of these, um, each of these pieces of artwork, especially on the rhythm new movers pages, which is just, just another name for the sound, so we, we had to rename it the exact that sound. Due to um, um, anyway, on each of these rhythm uh, new movers pages, he's done something interesting with the artwork. Okay, 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 you can see, um, say for, for example, cut, cut time and level two. Now, now we're going to add eight notes, notes to this, so it's, it's going to be a little, a little harder, harder. Um, something different on the rhythm new movers page. Also, on the for the rhythm of the universe, we just try, try to, to adapt it just by this, this year. year. And, and, and so, so we adapted it to, to, um, be, to, to work, um, um, or at least suggest it, it, it could work, work with, with online, online lessons. And, and so, so, for instance, on this one, one they're supposed to do this switch, switch where, where if, if you're, you're in person, person you'll, you'll hold, hold your hands out like this, and they, they tap, tap, tap the rhythm in your hand of the first measure. And then at the bottom line, you switch. You tap, tap in their hand, hand and then you switch, and then you switch, and then you switch, switch, and it's so, so much fun. fun. But, but obviously, but obviously in online lessons, that, that's a little bit hard. hard. Um, and, and so, so or in lessons where you're supposed to social distance, that's, that's a little bit hard. And so, so there's, um, there's alternative, alternative activities, activities you can do. This one isn't necessarily 
necessarily on on less lessons but more their social distancing tap tapping each other back is, is one, one way that you're going to do that you tap each other back and then um, um, switch, switch so, so that you're, you're not facing each other um, here's, here's, here's one with high five is there, there and so we kind of normalize, normalize their air five is just, just being something, something that's what, what we're going to have to deal with for a while um so this is kind of kind of things that we've done to adapt to sort of what's happening in the world, world today. today. Um, this, um, this is, is level three. three. Obviously, obviously now, now we have dotted rhythms, rhythms and highs um, in cut time, time, so that's, that's going to be more complicated. And, and then again, you end, end up with um, some more chopped, chopped up artwork. And then at the very, very end, end, we get this, this imagery, excuse me, the manipulation of master of the prison certificate that again has the artwork that's reflective of the reflective of the unit. Now, if we were, if we were live, I'd try to have you guess what artwork this point point in this, this was for what you can see. see. It's, it's for dotted, dotted quavers, quavers. So you've got your dot there, you've got, you've got your quaver, quaver line, line, and then what, what almost, almost always follows, follows the dotted, dotted quaver, quaver notes is a semi quaver. And so you have, have these two lines, lines for that, that um, to represent that so it's a semi quaver note. Uh, this is uh, the um, this, this triplet chapter is interesting. Artists um, um, actually took the very first rhythm. Um, and, and it went like, like this, this one, one, two, da 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 da, da. Um, and, and he actually made it into, into a visual, visual representation. So, so we talked about how the first, first beat of the measure is always strong. strong. So, so if you look at the further this bar, bar to, to the left, left, you see this, this really dark gray line. Gray line. The, the second, second beat in the fourth beat of the measure is four, 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 weak, right? right? Strong, weak, 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 weak. weak. Um, and, and so, so he made, made those white. white. And, and, and then that third beating and that measure is where the triplet goes and so he subdivided that. that. So dun, 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 all right, all right. Real, real, real quick, the company metrics are really, really integral, integral in feeling the really 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 rhythm into students' bodies. Students bodies. They're, they're slow, slow, medium, medium and fast. fast. Now, now rhythm manipulations of tracks were just created last, last year. year. And, and, and so, so we saw a lot of how these tempos, and we really, really wanted to make sure that students were equipped to have what they need. And so the slow track is as slow as it can be while still being used. So we just discovered that some. It's, it's sometimes slow, 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 but I'm not, not, not pause pause attention. Um, um, and so, so if you have a very young, young student who is in a rhythm and relation, that's perfectly fine. fine. But don't push them short for fast track. track. Um, and, and that, that medium, medium track is just fine. fine. If all you can do is that slow track, track that's that okay, okay too. Um, um, so, so we just, just want, want to, to um, be able, able to help them do, do the rhythm accurately. And younger students, if you remember, aren't typically able to do those super fast speeds. They need a lot of hand-eye coordination. They need to be able to move their muscles in very fine ways. And so those super fast speeds are going to be a little hard for your uh, younger students. So the goal is not the fastest track. The goal is the track that works the best for the student. Um, I think we also have to train our young students to use appropriate amounts of energy for smaller note values. I noticed this when we were testing this. Um, if students are clapping um, quarter, 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 sixteenths notes, and they're they're trying to do those sixteenth notes with the same energy that those quarter notes are, they're going to not be successful at all. And so we need to teach them da 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 dum da 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 dum. It's a smaller motion in your hands here, or it's a smaller movement of your fingers on the piano, or maybe it's it's one fell swoop instead of just individual um, fingering. That's all about technique, and it actually plays into rhythm as well. Again, I know I said this already, but I put this on the slide twice for a reason. Pick the tempo that's best. Don't just pick the fastest tempo. All right, here's an example of compound meter, um, and I'm just going to kind of um, show you a few of these tracks. Let's see, hopefully we can get this one to work. Always do this with me if you can. It'll give you a better idea of how it feels. This is the medium track for this one. Three, one, one two, three, one. I'm sorry, this is a tap one. Left, right, left, together. Left. two hands.
extended rhythms. And you can see that's just a nice comfortable tempo, not too uh, slow, not too fast. The subdivisions are in the click off, uh, count off track. So you can hear one, one two, three, 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 or if you want to introduce it by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's all kinds of ways that you can do that. It's not scripted in that way um, to tell you exactly how to introduce it. It's up to your teaching method. Here's one for the triplets. I'll play again the medium track. Actually, on the triplet ones, I'm going to do the slowest track. So you can uh, get an idea of how slow it is. Two, three, one, two, three. And then obviously that's going to get um, faster, but if we did it too much slower, those triplets ended up sounding strange, those quarter notes ended up sounding too slow, and so there's just a, a, a balance of what's too slow, what's too fast, and of course the um, unit on triplets is going to be um, a faster track than say the units on um, um, semiquavers. So semiquavers, the slow track in here is going to be even slower just because there's more notes you have to fit into a beat. All right, so here's a medium track for this one. Let me get it for you real quick. All right, and this is just a simple just clap it. So two, three, four, one, two, ready, go. If you want to hear what those fast tracks sound like, I'll be happy to do that in question and answer. I'm just trying to make sure I get through all the material so I can get it done before you have to leave. All right, dotted quavers. Uh, excuse me, did I say that right? No, dotted, dotted semi quavers. No, dotted quavers, yes. See, I have to think about those international rhythm terms, don't I? All right, here we go. Track 11. All right. This one sounds like movie music, if I remember correctly. One and two and three and right hand. The first two tracks out of the three tracks that you get have the clapping or the tapping with them so the student can confirm that they have the right rhythm at home by listening to those first two tracks. Um, and dotted quavers, uh, real quick, let's just do this one real fast. I hope you're able to do these with me. Two, three, one, ready, go. I'll, let, I'll just let you listen. I don't want my clapping to over overpower the music there. Okay, one of my favorite um, things about rhythm manipulations is that there's a whole unit on polyrhythms. Three against two polyrhythms and four against three polyrhythms. Right hand, left hand, and left hand, right hand. So there's a whole unit to help this. Now one of the interesting things we did with one of the rhythm maneuvers page is do a rhythmic duet. So what I want you to do, what you do is you choose a line. So I'm going to do um, I'm going to do the bottom line and you do the top line. So you're going to go listening, listening to the eighth notes, listening now, keep the beat. And what happens is every time there's an X, you don't have to clap or anything, but every time that there's an X, our syllables are actually going to line up. And it's one of the things that we have to do with our students with polyrhythms to assure them that this is not as hard as it looks because there are times when your hands or your notes, or in this case, our syllables line up. So it ends up being a nice rhythmic duet, and um, both parts are depicted in the, um, oops, I'm sorry, hold on a second, let me make sure I have the right one. Both parts are depicted in the uh, tracks. You just have to decide which one is which. So you're going to do the top. One, two, ready, go. Listen, listen to the eighth notes. Listen to keep the beat. Listen, listen to the eighth notes. Listen to keep 
the feet. And hopefully you were able to uh, do that as I did it so you could see how those get together. It's really fun to do, especially in a crowd of people, crowd of teachers. Um, it's just an interesting sort of duet. All right, so some things that I discovered about polyrhythms when we were doing the tracks that I thought I'd share with you just because they were so helpful to me. Um, two against three polyrhythms, I think we all probably pretty, pretty much have. Um, not difficult, not difficult, works really well when you're teaching this because the grid is really simple. They go together, they kind of have a, a space, and then the left, right, left, right? Together, space, left, right, left, space, together, space. And so it's really easy to see that. But what I discovered when um, I had musicians helping me with these polyrhythms is they would send me these tracks with four against three, and I would listen and I would be like, is that right? And so I discovered that for some reason, some of the notes were appearing to be a little bit closer um, together. And you guys are probably saying, well, duh, Wendy, that's the way it is. But um, I was taught that it was okay to say, um, not very difficult, not very difficult. Well, that's very even sounding together, da, 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 da. And guess what? I discovered when I actually drew this, that it's actually not that way it, at all. It's dum da 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 da. Um, when I was um, telling teachers about this in a webinar we did this year, um, a teacher said, "Well, yes, you just say cook the big fat chicken, cook the big fat chicken, big fat chicken." And I was like, "Oh my goodness, that's that works. That's why people have been saying cook the big fat chicken because that rhythm in itself actually depicts exactly where those notes are to go." So anyway, that's just an interesting discovery that I made when I was doing this unit on polyrhythms, and it completely changed the way I was thinking about polyrhythms. And I I have to ask forgiveness for all my students for not quite teaching it quite the right way all these years. I think I play them the right way. Um, when you play them fast enough, um, but I just don't think I was teaching them the right way. So it's kind of a, an embarrassing moment. Um, oh, I don't know what just happened. My slides just advanced really, really fast. So I'm going to go back up. Hold on a second. Uh, here we go. Okay, so this one right here is the polyrhythm one. If you want to try it with me, this is going to be, let's go ahead and do it with the slow track, okay? All right, two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. this is two hands obviously So did you hear the little um, tempo blocks there in there? There's a higher pitched one for the right hand and a lower pitched one for the left hand. And it helps um, the student know exactly where those polyrhythms and Wendy Stevens as a teacher to know exactly where those polyrhythms are falling. Um, again, so lots of different things that teachers have said about these time saver, um, intermediate students don't like to count out loud, but with manipulations, they learn to count it right. I'd be tearing my hair out if it wasn't for menagerie and manipulations. After six months, two of my rhythmically challenging students, challenged students are beginning to play rhythms correctly for the first time. This is all music to my ears. And again, um, if you want to know how it works, especially for teachers and what kind of things that they've um, done, please read the reviews. These are reviews that teachers themselves have written and we don't edit those. So a couple of quick uh, tips for teaching. We're almost done here. Everyone asks this question, how do I fit this in? Because I've got so much already to do. I've got music, I've got technique, I've got this, I've got that, and it's a legitimate question. But think about this. Rhythm is the most fundamental skill for music making, right? So if it is, then it's okay and it's right to prioritize it. So just putting in three to four minutes for weekly lesson time um, is perfectly appropriate, even if that means that you get less best music done. Um, even if it means you have to sacrifice something else, if we really, really believe that rhythm is the most fundamental thing, those three to four minutes are the best part of the lesson in terms of the thing that the student is going to carry with them forever. 
every aspect of rhythm is going to help them, whether they're going to go on and take trombone or whether they're not, they're not going to play piano at all in the future. They're just going to enjoy music. That rhythm training is going to help them enjoy it even more. Um, it works for individual lessons or groups or classrooms. Um, it even works in teaching online, but as I said, simultaneous clapping is challenging. So everyone always asks, well, how do I adapt this? <clears throat> First of all, you have to teach it to ensure that they can clap it accurately. And you can't really teach it with you clapping at the same time like you would do at the lesson. So instead, just clapping maybe the first two measures to them, having them clap it back, making sure they understand that. So more of a clap back um, sort of approach instead of a clapping simultaneously approach. And then when you know that they have it, then you can turn them down. You don't have to mute them completely, but turn them down and clap it with them. What will happen is this. They'll think they're clapping with you and you'll just be the one that realizes they're a little bit off. They're a little bit behind you, but only you know that. And so if you can turn them down so it doesn't mess you up and you've already proven that they know the rhythm, then doing it with them just helps them feel like you're doing it together. Same thing with the tracks. You can play the tracks at the same time on your end. It's all broadcast to them in the same way. Think about what you just did a minute ago. All of those tracks that I was doing with you, did you feel like you were clapping with me? You did, but if I had seen you clapping, you would have been slightly behind the way I thought you should have been. And so it's a matter of perception for them and then just a matter of you knowing already that they know it. And you can usually tell if they're really off or if they're just going to have this a behind, um, slightly, slightly behind sort of effect. And then playing rhythm uh, tag, even with the tracks is very effective. So for instance, you clapping the first measure with the tracks, them clapping the second measure with the track so you just keep the music going they're going to seem like they're a little bit behind you're going to seem like you start that third measure a little bit sooner but it works and they perceive it to be all one unit all clear to get uh, all um dovetailed together so that's how you can do it um with um with online lessons adapted to online lessons so how does rhythm cup explorations fit into this curriculum this is a scope and sequence and a sequencing chart i'll show you the scope chart here in just a minute um, but this is sort of how the curriculum um, works rhythm menagerie is the main curriculum but if you need something that's even more basic like just goes through teaching steady beat and quarter notes by themselves the first my first rhythm cup explorations would be where to start that um, and then you go into Rhythm Menagerie. You spend a bulk and majority of your time here, but Rhythm Cup Explorations and Holiday Rhythm Cup Explorations are just a nice supplement to that. So a lot of teachers will do uh, remember that each unit has three levels. So they'll complete a level one, and then the students can do a page of rhythm um, cup explorations. They'll complete level two, and they can do a page, or maybe one or two rhythm cup explorations. And then when they get the whole unit done, maybe they can do a full page of rhythm cup exploration. So that's how I like to encourage teachers to do it, because Again, Menagerie and Manipulations has this comprehensive, carefully graded approach to help ensure mastery, and Rhythm Cup Explorations doesn't have that same approach. This is a scope and sequence chart that we have. So if you ever are teaching, for instance, dotted quarter notes, and you have these resources, and you think, well, where in my books do I go to find more information or find more exercises in dotted quarter notes? This scope and sequence chart um, covers that for you. You can actually get this um, for free. I actually have the whole first unit of Rhythm Menagerie available for free to you um, with this URL. I think Sharon's probably going to put it in the chat. Um, but if you go to this URL, you can download um, the whole first unit. You can download a few of the samples of practice tracks, and you can also download this scope and sequence chart. <clears throat> The format and flexibility, these are PDF books, so they're reproducible for students that you personally directly teach. We don't send out books, and so there's no shipping. Yay! And no international shipping. It's so crazy expensive. Um, so this means, though, that you can print it. You could put it on a projector. You could put it on a Promethean board if you're a classroom teacher. Um, there's all kinds of ways that you can use this to where it's just really, really flexible in a way that just a book would not be. Um, you only ever have to purchase any of these one time and you can re-download at any time. If you create an account on your way out of the checkout, you just re-download it and uh, you don't ever have to purchase it again. So that's pretty 
um, a pretty great deal um, <clears throat> instead of having to or excuse me, instead of having to purchase it again and again. You can use it with as many students or classrooms as you directly teach. So if you teach piano, but you also teach primary school music class, you can use the same one resource with all of them. You don't have to pay extra if you've got 500 students, if you've got 50 students, as long as you're the only one directly teaching from the curriculum, you can teach it to as many students as you have. Um, each teacher does need their own license though, so um, it's not a multi-teacher license, it's just a, a single um, teacher studio license where you can use with your studio. Um, so each teacher would need to own their own license and then you can print the PDF for any student you directly teach, charge them for the price of the printing. There's no reason that you should have to absorb that cost. Uh, you can't charge them extra. You can't make a profit on the book, um, but you can charge them for the price of the print printing. Um, and they certainly should pay for that um, so that uh, you're not out that money. And then you can email now the PDF book to any student that you directly teach. We've made a, a licensing change just this last week, or not this last week, this last year because of COVID so that you can just, if you purchased it, you can directly email that to the student you're going to use it with and they can have it on their iPad. They can have it on their um, computer or they can print it themselves. Real quick, the tracks though are not shareable. So if you purchase the tracks, um, you have to have the students purchase those to use them at home. Obviously you can use it with your students during lessons, but if they want to practice them at home, there's a separate um, purchase that they can make um, to use those tracks. There's like 865 tracks. <laughs> so it's a lot of tracks in Rhythm Menagerie and a similar number in Rhythm Manipulations. Okay, so real quick, I'll just tell you and then we'll do some questions with Sally and Sharon. Um, but I, I do have a special Curious Piano Teachers special that's going on right now. I haven't even announced it to the Compose Create world, um, but um, there's no coupon that's needed. Well, I just marked everything down more. So all of the individual, not excuse me, all of the bundles are on sale. Individual books are regular price. Um, but if you buy Rhythm Menagerie and the tracks, that's a special price right now. If you buy Rhythm, Rhythm Menagerie, Rhythm Manipulations and the tracks, that's a special price right now. And that lasts through not this this Friday, but the next Friday, January the 29th. So for example, Rhythm Menagerie, Manipulations, and all those 1,600-ish accompaniment tracks would normally be 211, and we have it marked down to 189. I think the normal bundle price is 195. Um, so sometimes you can still get um, a discount with the um, with a bundle purchase, but this particular uh, week, just because of the Curious Piano Teacher webinar, um, we're discounting them even more. Same thing with this. If you just want Menagerie, there's a way to get that at a great price. Same thing with this one. Purchase the uh, excuse me. The students and their parents can purchase the accompaniment tracks right now at a great price because we have these on sale for you as well. Um, so you can send uh, the students. Um, don't buy them for your students and then give them to them. Have them buy them because then they'll need their account so that they can download them because it's you don't want to mess with their technical issues, right? <laughs> so you want them to be able to have their own um, account so that they can actually just download it straight to their computer and you don't have to worry about that. There is a huge bundle that we usually have that's um, uh, that's um, on sale right now. That top price actually is not right. I'm sorry, I don't know where that came from. Um, but this bottom price down here, um, th it's normally 370 and we have it on sale for 329 right now. So anyway, real quick, couple things you need to know if you're interested in this at all. We have the North American and the international version. If you use rhythm terms like quarter note, half note, quaver, or, uh, eighth note, use North American. If you use terms like crotchet, minimum quaver, then you would get the international. Um, and then there's a, um, the piano versus the classroom. And I just real quick want to say what this is. Um, the only difference between these two editions is that the introductory page of the classroom edition applies to any instrument. So if you teach two instruments like strings, um, or violin and piano, you would want the classroom version because you don't, the, the, the piano version tells them to play the rhythm like with a fifth on the piano, or it says high notes on the piano. It's very specific to piano. So if all you teach is piano students, the piano edition is just fine. But if you also teach classroom students, you teach voice, you teach any other instrument, the 
classroom edition works for all of it, including piano. Um, so if you have that, then the classroom version is much more versatile. Okay, so this is my last slide. So Sally and Sharon, feel free to come on when you have a chance, but this is where you can um, get all of the rhythm. You can just shop by going composecreate.com slash rhythm. You can get a free sample with this other URL. I think Sharon probably shared that. And then you can always email us questions at support at composecreate.com. Either I can answer that or um, Amanda, our new uh, create, uh, Compose Create um, team member can answer that as well. So, whoo, there we go. I'm sorry about the little techno uh, technological um, glitches, but um, hopefully you got a good, good sense of, of the tracks anyway, so. Fantastic sense of, of exactly the wealth absolute wealth of material oh, wow. that you've oh, put thank together, you. Wendy. You thank know, you. fantastic. It was such a good overview. I certainly feel a lot more informed and I should be going to avail myself. And uh, oh, I just you. wanted to say, you know, the, the amount of thought and, and research mm. that you've done into this, oh. you know, little things like getting those quavers on the mm. on the third beat of yeah. bar, as we call it, so right. that they lead that you know right. that doesn't just happen overnight. Mm. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's the right. the you know I can see some people might be going, oh that's quite a lot of money. Yes, it is because it's a mm -hmm. quality, quality, quality resort mm -hmm. what you've put together mm -hmm. with all your years Absolutely. of expertise there. So fantastic, really, really well, well thank done. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate you saying that. It means a lot to me. Karen. So, so amazing. And there was actually, there was one point I was going to hop on and just give the feedback. I think it was when you'd finished oh. the uh, menageries of just the okay. number of people who were coming in and going, I'm laughing so much. I'm having so much fun. This is <laughs> okay. just amazing. And it, it's this thing. I think the, oh, this the other thing is these track. Yes. <laughs> It's it's the tracks, yeah. and there was there was someone in the, in the chat. I think it was maybe um, it was Joanne, um, because she has been using your stuff for quite a while. Doesn't okay. have the um, the tracks, and I think Kath mm. is the same. But of course, they can. They wanted to know can they right. purchase that separately? Obviously, they can. Yeah, and that's that's a great question because when we first came out with menagerie and manipulations, they didn't have tracks. So for many years, yes. teachers were using them without tracks, with still with great success. And now we're so excited because the tracks just add such a huge Absolutely. extra musical component. But that's why we made sure those yes. were also on sale too, so that those who've been using menagerie and manipulations all these years can add those. Um, okay. A good price, so. so. Another quick question. So if, let's say someone bought those all a couple of years ago. They don't mm -hmm. have the job. The books are exactly the same. The books haven't changed. They will still go along with this. This is also a very good question. So here's what we did in 2017. We updated Rhythm Menagerie to include track numbers. So um, that they'll need to just re-download it again. We decide we also improved some of the rhythms. I was a little not happy with a few of the rhythms, and so actually quite a few of the rhythms. <laughs> and so we revised a number of them and we just decided we're not gonna charge people who have already purchased this again and purchased uh, they don't need to buy it again. So all you have to do if you already own it is and you haven't downloaded it since 2017 is just re-download it. Same thing with Rhythm Manipulations. The newest um, edition came out in 2020 this year and um, along with the tracks. And so we added track numbers and revised a number of the um, rhythms. And all you have to do if you already owned it prior to this is just re-download it. That's a great question. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. And I mean, the other thing that I'm loving about, about the tracks is as pianists and certainly with the current situation that we all as <laughs> no matter what instrument you play you find yourself in mm -hmm. is this you know pianists don't often get to play with other people so right. it can right. you know students can be tempted to lift a piece of music and they kind of without actually mm -hmm. setting their steady pulse speed so what right. i love as well about these tracks is actually getting them to be aware of counting in, going, okay, yes. establishing the pulse and then subdividing yes. appropriately, which is something else that's 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 really wonderful. Yeah. And um, another comment there um, that I saw earlier as I was scrolling was this, that, you know, teenage students 
who didn't have the tracks now do have the tracks mm -hmm. that yeah. will be a real game changer yeah and we really i worked this with the so musicians fun. yeah i worked with the musicians a lot on this to make sure that those teenage tracks sounded like tracks teenagers would appreciate there's different genres of music through through both of them so we didn't just do you know a classical we didn't just do rock we didn't just do jazz we just we tried to just do everything but at the same time make it appealing so the menagerie has a little more uh, some of the tracks are a little more kid-like but as it progresses it gets progressively more less kid-like and then manipulation yeah, yeah, exactly. And then manipulations, I specifically said no tracks that sound kid-like. That doesn't mean there aren't still fun, classical, non, non poppy sounding tracks, but there's a lot of both of those. So I was also going to say something you said, uh, Sharon, about students practicing with them at home. It's a little bit of accountability. Um, like you said, to make sure, you know, make sure they're, they're counting off as well as making sure that they're not just making up their own rhythm. <laughs> I mean, and, and some, some uh, like adult students have actually, um, that are even self-taught, have asked about the appropriateness of using this to help them learn. And that's what I love about the tracks now is that the tracks can actually teach them what it's supposed to sound like, um, whereas there wasn't that before, so. Yeah, yeah, just, just super, super, super stuff. And yeah, I, other things I loved, I loved the composition element. Because, of course, it's the writing down yeah, that, again, yeah. helps with the accountability. Yeah. That it's only when, only when you take the oral mm -hmm. through the symbol to the written that, yeah. you know, that is such a good pedagogical sequence, isn't it? Yeah. Then yeah, you and find that... out what they understand. Right. And it's it, like I was baffled. I thought I had to have a little bit of um, self good self talk because I thought I was a horrible teacher when I realized my students weren't getting it. But I just had to adapt and change the way I was teaching because they weren't getting that only four beats could really fit in that measure. And, you know, sometimes it's not something you can all always teach in one week that there's just that's too much heady kind of stuff. And so you can let that be an activity that you do later. And I mean, all of this is supposed to be very flexible so that teachers can really adapt it, not only to how you teach, but how students learn. And we all know that students learn differently, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and of course we were all buzzing and we we're all going, oh, it's wonderful because rhythm is so energizing. So oh, you yes. might only have, you know, just find three or four minutes in, as Wendy was saying, yeah. in a lesson. Because especially online, we need this. We need this, mm -hmm. this boost mm -hmm. of energy. Just by right. doing that, you immediately yeah. then go, yay, come on, then back to the right. keyboard after you've done that. Right. And the well, problem. and it, there's, there's something about listening to the music and being involved in that instead of you as a teacher trying to make the music and help the student be involved. That's a lot of things for a teacher to do at one time. Mm -hmm. So to have the music be there and to be involved with the student, I think is a different sort of feel. Yeah, fabulous. Yeah, fabulous. I've just got one question that I'm seeing yeah. here come through from Suzanne. Sure. Um, she says, just to clarify, how much should each pupil spend to get the most out of this? How much time? Is that what she's asking? I'm guessing she's actually talking about the finance, you know, kind of getting okay. parents to pay sure. for certain things. Right. Okay. So he, Money. Yeah. you really, right. So here's the thing. This is not just a method book that they're going to be in for six months or nine months. Um, typically, um, it just depends on the number or how, how quickly a student progresses. But typically, if you start at the beginning, a student's going to be in this for three-ish years, um, two to three-ish years. And so this is a long-term investment and they don't have to purchase the book. Um, so you purchase the book and you print it for them. You could do it a unit at a time. Um, you could do it yourself. You could save money that way, or you could do it at a print shop. So their investment is really just what Whatever the printing costs are of that rhythm, rhythm menagerie PDF that you have purchased. Um, and so, you know, if you, if you think about the price of method books, I mean, we're talking about, and I mean, I don't, I don't translate into where you guys are at, um, but you've got the $9 lesson book and the $9 theory book and the $6 repertoire book and the this and the that. And that happens every, what, nine months maybe um, or mm -hmm. to a year. We're talking about a three-year investment that is probably not even going to cost that much um, 
you know, when, when you put all of those things together. So that's the initial investment that they have. So it's not much in terms of um, the value that they get. And then if they do purchase the accompaniment tracks, again, those are optional at home. They can purchase them, but they'll also they'll also make progress even if they don't purchase them. But if they can purchase them, that's an investment then that lasts you know, for however many years they can use it for multiple children. They don't have to buy it again if it's within their own family to use. Mm. Um, yeah. So, you know, these days right now, um, if if you thought that parents were, were strapped for cash and, you know, it was difficult to purchase those things, I just start with the, the book itself and you having the tracks and then, um, you know, see how that goes with the students, see how well they're doing. And then when they can afford the tracks, um, then that could be something they could add later. But that's a good question. I, th I think one thing you could do for your for your students that I've had recently is um, maybe suggest to the parents if there's a birthday coming up, if, if the student really enjoys it, mm -hmm. then, you know, see if the birthday's coming sure. up and, and say if they yeah. you need something for them, right. they see, you know, this would be a good idea. And, you know, it's like anything, it's like studio policies, policies and things like that. If you believe in the power of it, you can sell it to them. You can say your students need this and they will love it. It will help them be accurate. And it's the best investment yeah. you can make in establishing rhythm. As long as you're convinced that it's a good thing, I think you can, you can definitely convince parents to do it. But parents really cue off of you as a professional. And if you're not if you're not exuding confidence that they really need this, then they're just going to opt to not buy it. So, yeah. yeah. And what I want to say is what I really love is this, and Sally has already alluded to this, the way you have put this together and structured this. I mean, we're both seeing the absolute, I mean, we create yeah. stuff. We know no. how long <laughs> this yes, takes. Yes, we do. Isn't the it? tiniest little detail. Yeah, I mean, I I'm know. sure that the, yeah. you know, collaborating with the artists in itself, mm -hmm. that, I mean, I, I'm even mind blown about the detail <laughs> that's gone in, into that. Yeah. But it's the fact that this is about teaching rhythm in a structured, conceptual mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. This is not the way I was taught rhythm, you know, mm, so mm -hmm. you kind of, you had a piece, you learned mm -hmm. a piece, you could play the right rhythm with that piece, but right. you went to learn another piece with the same rhythm ingredients and you didn't know what to do with them. Right, you had, you had to, to relearn to your it. teacher, can you play yeah. it? And I'll yes. figure it. But this is what you're doing mm -hmm. here. And I love mm -hmm. the amount of practice because of course, mm -hmm. it's not just a case of, um, you know, presenting, students with a new concept, they need to practice, 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 mm -hmm. practice. Mm -hmm. And I'm loving too that that's what this resource is, is enabling us as teachers to do, is to help those students practice. And, in, and it's just fun. It's just fun. Yeah. It's just great. <laughs> well, I thank you. <laughs> thank you. They, all of those things really resonate with me. Yes, it was a lot of work. It's it's behind me now, but and when you're in the throes of it, you're like, oh my goodness, this is just huge. And just even the revisions themselves were just are. A, a huge um, task. But I love that. I mean, the whole idea is that if rhythm really is so fundamental, um, we should be teaching it in a way that can transition and infiltrate every piece of music, not just the one piece that you're working on. And I just think we've just gotten stuck for so many years teaching rhythm as an aside um, with the method book piece or with whatever we're teaching and not really prioritizing it as really the number one thing um, that students have to learn no matter what they do, whether they're just tapping their foot to a piece on you know, Spotify or not <laughs> you know it's the one thing that really we feel um at a guttural yeah. level without much um yeah. without much education but we need education to make ourselves capable of of reading it and and knowing what it what it sounds like when we look at it so absolutely well i think it's time to to wrap up now really isn't it we're just having too much fun talking yeah, yeah. and i think yes we will we will wrap up i'm actually i've just spotted um uh, a comment that i i'm just going to wrap the call with um and suzanne says i've had such frustrations building rhythm into pupils mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. is an oasis for me Thank you. So I think that sums up um, a lot of the feeling um, from this Great. webinar. 
Um, and I just want to clarify that I will be getting the replay out um, for everyone who's on this call and everyone who's registered. Um, expect within the next 24 hours to receive an email from us. We'll have all of the, those links. I know some of you have been finding those links haven't been working, but I will be sending those through um, in that email. So look out for that. Just check your junk folder in case it goes in there. And uh, Wendy, thank you so, so much um, for joining us today. Well, thank you so much for having me. And I'll just say real quick at the very end, if anyone ever has any questions or if you're having trouble with the links and it's not a matter of a link that you're sending, if it's a problem on my end, it looks like, don't hesitate to email us uh, support at composecreate.com. We wanna make sure you get those samples if you're interested or help you find what's right for you um, and so that you get paired up with the right thing. I'm always happy to help. So thank you so much. And thank you again, Sally and Sharon for um, just inviting me on. It's it's been lovely. Hopefully one of these days we'll see each other in person again and yeah. maybe even see your lovely community. So thank you. <laughs> thank you again, Wendy. Delightful. Thank you so much. And thank you for everyone who's joined us.